Hey, what is going on everyone? In the last video, what I believe we did was create this check method right here, and we should have made the solve button which alternates between the word solve and clear. In this video, what I'd like to do is finish up this app by creating the logic that'll actually go through our Sudoku board and solve it for us, along with one more method that's gonna clear or like reset the game for us. So let's go just below our check method and let's write the code that's actually gonna go through and solve our Sudoku board for us. So we're gonna type in public Boolean and then I'm just gonna call this method solve and then we're gonna pass in our Sudoku board. So we're gonna go Sudoku board and I'm just gonna call it display. And then within here, we're gonna set up two new variables. I'm gonna call it row and column. Now you could use the selected row and selected column that we defined above, but I just wanna keep this all local. So I'm gonna create two new variables right here, the row and column. And then below this, what I wanna do is sift through our game board. So the one we defined up here with our for loops. So this guy, and we're gonna sift through there and try to find zero values. So we're gonna go for int r equals zero while r is less than nine. And we're just gonna do a r plus plus, close this off and we're gonna do a nested for loop with the column like we've been doing throughout this series. So we're gonna change the r to a c. Then within here, I wanna create an if statement that's gonna determine whether or not the cell that our for loops are currently on contains a zero value, which would represent a blank cell. So we could type in this.board, the row and column. And then if that happens to equal zero, what we wanna do is set our row equal to whatever our R value is, our column to whatever our C value is. Then once we hit that empty cell, we wanna break out of our for loops. So we're just gonna type in break. And I forgot we should define these as a negative one for our default value, because below this, what we're gonna do is type in if the row equals negative one or the column equals negative one, then we're gonna to want to return true. Now, the reason we're gonna do that is because we're gonna use recursion to solve our Sudoku board. Then after our if statement, what I wanna do is type in another for loop and we're gonna use this for loop to actually place values within the empty cell that we found within our nested for loops above. So we're gonna create one more. We're gonna type in int i equals one while i is less than 10 because we want our range to be from one to nine because those are the possible numbers that can be placed within our Sudoku board. So we're gonna go from one to nine and just in I plus plus. So then within this for loop, what I wanna do is go this.board and actually place in whatever number I happens to be in the empty cell that we extracted above right here. So we're gonna place in I, not one, so whatever number I happens to be. And then once we place that in, don't forget we have to update our display by display.invalidate. And then once we have that placed in, what we have to do is make sure that the number that we just placed into that cell is actually valid. So we can go if check, and we can pass in our row and column into our check function that we created in the previous video. So if that returns true, what we have to do is go if our solve method, and don't forget we have to pass in our display. So if that equals true, then we're gonna return true. Now, outside of this if statement, this is gonna allow us to do our backtracking. We're just gonna go this dot board, the row and column, and then we're just gonna set that equal to zero. So this is everything we need, except I forgot we need to return false if we don't ever hit any of these return true statements. So return false. And now this is the logic that's actually gonna go through and solve our Sudoku board for us. So I went over that pretty quick. So let's go over what's happening in this method. So to start off, we define two new variables, the row and column, and we give them a default value of negative one. The reason for this is because if we don't find an empty cell, what we wanna do is return true, so we know that our Sudoku board is solved. All the cells are filled up. Now, if that isn't the case, and our two for loops did find an empty cell, it's gonna take the corresponding row and column for that cell and set it equal to our local row and column variables. Then finally, we come down to the last block of the code, which is this for loop here. And this is what's pretty much solving our Sudoku board recursively. So we define this for loop and it goes from one to nine, and we're gonna place in those values into our Sudoku board. Then once we place a value within our Sudoku board, don't forget we have to update our display so the user can kind of see the cool effect of our program actually solving the board. So we update our display, and then we check to see if the number that we just placed within our Sudoku board is valid. Now, if it is valid, we're gonna start recursively solving our Sudoku board by calling this method, the one that we just created again. So now if we go through the entire iteration of our for loop, that means that we need to carry out our backtracking and it didn't find a possible value for that empty cell. 
So this is going to end up returning false down here, and it's going to completely skip over our return true statement. It's going to set the cell that these two for loops found back to zero, and it's going to start our backtracking process. Okay, so now we can come just below our solve method, the one that we just created, and let's create our reset board method. So we go public void, and then we could call it reset board, and it's not going to take in anything. Close this off, and then all we have to do is reset the game board, so that 2D array that we created, and our array list that contains all the empty cells. So we can do that by coming up to our constructor, and we can just copy and paste these two for loops right here, which set up our game board, but we can also use it to reset our game board. So let's come back into that method, paste it in here, then past our two for loops, we have to clear the array list that contains all the empty cells. So to clear that, all we have to do is type in this dot empty box index, and then set that equal to a new array list. So that should clear that. And now we have to actually link up all of our solve and clear methods to our solve button. And then we should be able to test out the app with a Sudoku board. So let's come over to our main activity.java file, which has all the onclick methods. And we're gonna scroll down to the solve method. So within the solver onclick method, we're just gonna add in a few more lines to finish up this app. So within the clear case, so when the user presses the clear button, we want to game board solver dot reset board. We want to run that method, the one that we just created, and then we have to go game board, and then we need to actually redraw our game board because we changed the values within our 2D array. So that'll redraw it, and that's everything we need within the clear case. Now, when the user presses the solve button, we're gonna to need to run the solve method, but we're gonna to need to do that in a different thread. So the user can still interact with our app while the program is actually going through and solving our Sudoku board. So first off, what I'd like to do is grab the empty box indexes before we actually start running the solve method. So we can do that by typing in gameboardsolver.get empty. So it doesn't look like it's in here. It's probably a private method. So let's go back over to our solver.java and we're looking for get empty box indexes. Let's put an E in there. We're gonna change this from private to public. And then we're gonna come back over to our main activity.java file and we can type in Gameboard solver dot get empty box indexes, which is going to populate our array list here with all the empty cells. And that's gonna be used to color them a different color so they don't match the permanent values. So we can come back over to our activity main.java file. And now we have to create an inner class within here to run a separate thread for our solver method. So we can do that by typing in class. We'll call it solve board thread. And then this class is going to implement a runnable. So then we can close this off and then we have to override the public void run method. This doesn't take in anything. Then we can run the game board solver dot solve. And then we have to pass in our game board. And now to actually run this on a separate thread, we can come back into our on click and we're going to come just below our empty box indexes where we grab those and we're going to type in solve board thread to create an instance of this class here. And then I'm just gonna call it solve board thread, set that equal to a new solve board thread and that statement. And then just below it, we're gonna go new thread. And then all we have to do is pass in this solve board thread here and run the dot start method. So we just type in dot start and then that should run the solver method on a different thread so we could still interact with our app. Then we need to run a game board dot invalidate to update our game board. All right, so it looks like we're finally ready to go and solve our first Sudoku puzzle with the app that we just made. So let's come up to the far right corner and we can click the play button to run our emulator. And then we can see if there's any errors. So we can come down and click the solve button. And right off the bat, I can tell I forgot to change the color of our solve numbers. And our box check looks like it's wrong because we're getting a diagonal one here, which we definitely shouldn't be getting one and we should be able to clear this which okay so that works we could place in numbers okay so what we got to do is go and change the color of the solve text and i need to go and take a look at the box check so let's go take a look at the box check first so we can come back over to our solver.java file and we can go and find our check method that's the solve check so we're looking at the box check here and just a quick look, we got that equals, oh, so that's what it was. So we have the column. So it, I had box column in there. So if you take a look, I had box column. We need to make that 
the column. So we're checking the actual cell that was passed into this method. So it looks like, I think everything else looks fine here. Now what we can do is come over to our mainactivity.xml file and I forgot to change the color of our text solve attribute from black to green or whatever color you want it to be. So if you click the Sudoku board and then come over to the far right and click the split button, which will show you the XML associated to our design. And then we could find our Sudoku board tag and we're looking for the letter color solve. You can see I have it set to black right now, but we can make it whatever color we want. So we could go like 00FF00 to make it green. And I think that should be everything. So let's come back up to the far right, click the play button to run our emulator. And let's see if that fixed all of our errors. So it loaded up and we click the solve button and this should be much faster. And if you went through this, you could see that there would be no errors. It looks good to me. We get our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, everything looks good. So I'm going to go through and place in a Sudoku board and we can actually test a real Sudoku board puzzle. So I went ahead and typed in the Sudoku board. It was from the very first video in this series. And we come down, we can click the solve button. And as you saw from the first video, it solves this Sudoku puzzle really quickly. So I'll go through and type in another one and maybe we can get a little bit more of an effect. So I'll be back. Okay, so I went ahead and placed in the second Sudoku board that you saw this app solve in the very first video of this series. Now, when I click the solve button, it might be a little bit faster than when you saw it initially because I did go ahead and change the method a little bit as I was working on this series to make it a little bit faster. So I think initially it took it about 10 seconds, but this was at least less than a second. Okay, so it looks like that's it for this video. If you guys did make it this far in the series, please leave a comment down below. I would love to see who actually made it this far. And if you could, let me know what you think I could improve to make these videos a little bit better. And as always, if you guys do have any questions, just drop a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.